Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the official Eurovision Song Contest podcast recorded in front of a live audience right here at the London Eurovision Party. <laughs> Woo! Oh, 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 listen to that roar. So good, so good. Uh, we are well into pre-party season, as we know. Not long to go until the grand final in Malmö on May the 11th. Very exciting. I'm excited. You guys excited? <laughs> of course. Uh, coming up on today's episode, we are chatting to some Eurovision legends. Also, some of this year's class, if we can find them, because the venue here is like a maze and they may have got trapped in a basement somewhere. But hopefully we will find them. But I don't want to waste any time. I want us to give a huge welcome to my first guest, who is quite simply a Eurovision icon. There is no other word, an icon. It is now 10 years since they wowed the Eurovision crowd, winning with Rise Like a Phoenix. It is Conchita. <laughs> oh. Thank you. So good to have you here is so good where's 10 years gone thank you for having me yes what the actual <laughs> no somebody i mean it came up like three years ago and somebody said you're gonna have like your 10 years anniversary i'm like no it must be no it's not but yeah what happened well you haven't aged a bit no i well i decided not to <laughs> <laughs> so. give me the tips please all the tips it's a lot of rest <laughs> <laughs> it was history making and I don't know if you'd agree with this but I'd argue that your win was one of the biggest cultural moments of this millennium your win ran so deep for so many people yeah it's intense um I mean I'm so happy that we all can share this because for me uh yeah I can't I, till this day I can't really watch any snippets of it and, and then I'm like you know already in tears because it's it meant so much to me as a, just as an artist as a queer kid, and then getting the feedback of everybody and all the stories I heard, um, uh, how many how many people got like inspired by this moment is just it's overwhelming, and I'm so grateful to be you know in this story. You, so you don't watch it back? You never watch? No, 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 it's not on purpose. It's just you know you, I mean you don't like go back and like oh what did I do ten years ago, <laughs> um, but. Yeah, I, but sometimes, you know, when I'm like in TV shows or something, there is like always this little montage of the things I did. And then I'm like always choking a little bit because it's very intense till today. Yeah, There is a bit in that performance when you watch it back on YouTube or whatever, there's a roar from the crowd as it, I think you're after the bridge. So you're approaching the finale, the final chorus, and you can hear this wall of sound from the audience. Were you aware of that at the time? No, you can't hear anything with your oh, in, in your in monitoring. Ears. You can't hear anything, but you feel it. You feel it. Um, and actually, it's a lie. I heard it because it was so loud. <laughs> no, it was so loud because as you just mentioned it, I felt, yeah, because I know exactly why I was like, I have to concentrate because you get, you, you get, you get carried away so easily with emotions and especially when when there are so many people cheering for you and it's it's insane, it's insane. What happened that night? It truly is still unbelievable. Do you remember it with crystal clarity or no, is it a blur? It's a total blur. It's a total blur. I just, one of the, the moments I always remember is when like, I think there were still three countries to go in terms of voting and, and the results coming in. And there were, it was already the, the, the um, the, the gold glitter rain coming, falling down from the skies. <laughs> because, because I thought, don't jinx it. There are still more countries to go. And I didn't, I've never been good at math. So I didn't, and I didn't listen. <laughs> so, you know, the presenter then said, there is no way of anybody else winning but me. And I didn't get it. So I was like in the middle of being angry. And then, ah, okay. <laughs> you know, it was a weird moment. But then I remember then my, my former manager dragged me, like really dragged me up the stairs. Yanked. Because I had such a tight dress and uh, nobody thought of, of, you know, moving up a staircase or something. Why would we? <laughs> but then this really was a challenging moment to, <laughs> to get to so go. So stupid, right? You have like the biggest <laughs> moment in your life. And I remember getting up the stairs or not getting up the stairs. <laughs> Because the dress was so tight. It was so tight. But 
It's always visual before comfort. Always. Always. Yeah. Always. I, that's a good philosophy to yeah. have in life. Yeah. Vision before comfort. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. <laughs> And <laughs> obviously, lots changed for you in your whole life. But what changed immediately after that win? What changed in your life permanently? Well, I really felt I arrived because I had this fantasy for all of my life as a queer kid. Every hairbrush was a microphone. Every podest was a stage. Every every group of people was an audience, whether they wanted it or not. And I always had this. <laughs> This imagination of me being in a slow mo movie and finding my light, and and then it came became true all of a sudden. You know, I really felt like I arrived. I felt home. I felt I really could relax into the situation, which I'm very grateful for now. In hindsight, I could really take in the moment. Yeah, we've all been there, haven't we? Microphone in hand, into the mirror. You know, we've all done it. That yeah. the lights on us, performing mm. for our parents, whether they liked it or not. No, I'm doing a show for yes. you again. The same show like last <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, here is my choreo. You will, you will accept it. Um, and it's been, like I said, it's been 10 years. And I just think that what you did opened so many doors for other artists at Eurovision. It's always been a very safe space for any artist to come on and do what they want to do. Mm. And I feel that you are one of those people, when we look back through history, that set a marker down. You know what? I, I feel like I have this same exact feeling with uh, Loreen and Euphoria. I think that she really changed the song contest back then. I don't want to be... I hope this is not insensitive, but I felt like this is when the Eurovision Song Contest became cool. I think some people yeah, would agree. You get what I mean? I mean, I loved it, of course, but with Lorene, it was all of a sudden, oh, it's a pop phenomenon. It's happening. And now we have songs that, that are, like, of course, a little bit Eurovision because I feel like there is a certain scent to the Eurovision music. Yeah. But now it's like really mainstream and just hit after hit. And I think that changed with Lorene. So thank you for, for saying that I changed something I've done. I, well. th I, I think, do you not think that Conchita was a moment, right? An actual moment. <laughs> but, um, where is the weirdest place you have ever sung Rise Like a Phoenix? It must be somewhat of a rehearsal, to be honest. And that quite often is in a toilet or a shower. I can't think of what I've I've sang on boats and on floating devices and <laughs> <laughs> I don't a, a know floating device. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, when you're on a gay cruise and you're like in the pool and stuff. Yeah, you've sung "Rise Like a Phoenix" of in the pool of I a gay do, cruise. I do anything for a good flirt. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said to me the other day because I was trying to think of questions that you might never have been asked, and somebody said, "Will you ask Conchita? Do they ski?" So listen, <laughs> um, you, you're all familiar with Sound of Music, right? The movie. Who yeah. isn't? Yes. So, well, most Austrians are not, anyway. <laughs> Another story. But so this is where I grew up, actually. So it's mountains and clouds and birds and everything. So I, I learned how to ski very early as a kid because it's like part of growing up there. And then I didn't do it for, for a long, long time. And I never did it since. <laughs> Because, um, yeah, I feel like I um, would break some bones and I don't want that. It's like riding a bike, though, isn't it? You, that's what you heard. <laughs> no, you know what I did? A few years back, I did Langlaufen, which is, it's like skiing, but not like from a hill. It's like walking fastly with thin, long skis. What's skating? Is it what it... Something like that. Cross-country skiing, Yeah, 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 yeah. What, yes. Whatever you said. So this is what I did. And I fell over a gazillion times because I also thought it's like riding a bike and it's not, people. <laughs> <laughs> Do not ski. So for, so whoever asked me that question earlier, I can't remember quite who it was, but... Uh, it's a no. It's a no. It's a no. <laughs> there is no skiing. No. What are some of... I assume every year you dip into Eurovision. You yeah. watch it. What, what have been songs that have really impressed you since you won? Well, listen, anything Lorene does is just joyful and blissful to my ears because I followed her back when she won and I, I consumed every bit of music she ever released and I think this woman is incredible and she deserves everything she got and I'm her biggest fan so she would always be on top of my list. 
Um, last year, Gustav was just so good. <laughs> he would come right on cue. <laughs> Gustav has entered the I chat, mean. everybody. Gustav, come on. <laughs> Here he is. It's so cool. It's Hello, so my dear. Hi. 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 Gustav has entered the room. Hi. That, did, you, <laughs> did you spot Gustav out the side of your eye then when you said about because of you and Gustav? Did you no, know? No, I mean, I was going through the Rolodex of last year's songs. Okay. And I feel like your vocal performance was just so impressive and being there in the stadium. I mean, you felt it too. It was just, everybody was like lighting up and, and being full of joy. Who is coming? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is Alexandra from Kano. <laughs> also Tom from Kano and Fred. Uh, you, you know, you know what, this, this always, this warms my heart because this is the Eurovision family, you know, these are people who have changed our lives in, in a good way, you know, and to see everybody here just fills my heart with joy and I hope it does to you as well. Um, I was going to ask you quickly, Conchita, about Loreen, yeah. because I remembered when you two worked together, you did the Eurovision movie. I did, I did. How was, th how was that? Oh gosh, that was the best time we ever had. You can imagine, we don't really get together that often. So there were so many contestants and former winners and we all still stayed in the same hotel and we had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember Lorraine being in the whirlpool and I jumped, whatever, whatever. I can't, <laughs> can't get into details, but it was, it was, I mean, it was insane. What an experience. It was a Hollywood production and all like the, the trucks and everything, and everybody got their own dressing room, and we really felt like Meryl Streep <laughs> every time. And you then doing like the scenes, it was it was just so blissful because obviously there are like um, these people who are all actresses and actors, but we really had a, 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 a fun party because we would perform for them, of course, to the playback and stuff. But it was really it was a real moment, and I feel like you see that in the movie too. Oh, it's the highlight. I mean, the film I love, it's the highlight of the film. I watch it on repeat because, mm -hmm. well, first of all, you're spotting who do I know from Eurovision? Can I spot them all? Yeah. And then the song is Black Eyed Peas, I Got a Feeling, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I or think it's it? the start. Yeah. Yes, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of songs involved. I did Ne Partez Pas Sur Moi. <gasps> you did! Uh -huh. Can I tell you a story? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just last week, I've been to a gay bar in Vienna and I met this very cute guy and I, we had a really, we had a nice conversation going on and he was like, oh, what are you doing? And I'm like, what? And he like did not know who I was. Whatever, no, that was just for comedic purposes. I didn't <laughs> react that way. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, we were talking about music and whatnot and then... The bar owner knows me and every time I'm there he wants to put on like music from me because he's just such a big fan. And then he put on the Eurovision movie medley. And then I was like, okay, well, yeah, I'm gonna talk to this cutie and what did I have? And then I came up and the whole bar started to cheer and I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like, what? <laughs> so I love that. Did he keep talking to you? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, good. Yes. I'm yeah. glad. We had a lovely It's, it's actually a pickup trick with the bar. We have a deal with the bar owner. <laughs> He's, I like this one. Yeah. Put it on. Yeah, yeah. put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Gustav, can you remember watching Conchita win back in 2014? I actually, I do, because I was on tour with Hercules and Love Affair at the time, and we were here in London, and we were working with uh, some people from Vienna. Mm. And I, because of this, I already knew you were participating, and there was already excitement about you being part of it. And then I think we came off stage and the guy was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. He won and it happened and happened and happened. And it was just a big moment because it was also for us, like a queer band, we felt a bit like a ah, little salute for like the queer world, you know, that really was uh, like a tap on the shoulder. Mm. Like we got this, we got mm. this. It's a very important moment. And do you guys remember that moment that Conchita won as well? Yes. <laughs> Where yes. <laughs> You're like, who? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, watching you, performing that performance was everything yeah. and like i felt that i i want to be on that stage one day doing what you did and actually i did your song oh, nice. in several performances after it's a good song now yeah it's but i did song, it I so bad and i did it, <laughs> it was you were like 12 i was like 12 or, or something oh yeah God. 
I was I was actually a bit older, but I remember <laughs> being there like this tiny event in a, a small island outside of Norway. It was seven people in the audience, and I was doing your song. Oh. <laughs> oh. I love that. Spreading the word, spreading yes, the word yes. of the phoenix to everyone. <laughs> and Tom, you tried to get into Eurovision for Norway the year before, didn't you? Twenty thirteen. Yes. And do you do you remember sitting and watching that contest where Conchita won? Absolutely. Uh, because I've been a Eurovision fan since I was a kid. That's, uh, I think, uh, all of us uh, here on stage and also in the room uh, know why uh, this competition means so much for us. But I think uh, I remember seeing it and, and I immediately knew, okay, that's the winner. Because it was, it's the thing, like, one thing is the song and uh, the other thing is the the vocals, but also kind of like the the way uh, connecting with the audience through uh, through the screen, and and I think that's what you say, Gustav. Like you know that this song means a lot both for the artists, but also for the people uh, around. I think that that meant a lot for me as well. So um, it was amazing. And um, Fred, were you a Eurovision fan back in the day? Can you remember watching Conchita? Um, yes, of course, I uh, watched it, and I think it thought it was very cool. And uh, yeah, I've always been a Eurovision fan, and we had this Sami in nineteen. 83 uh, with Sami Atnan and after that uh, I was yeah like dreaming about as Alexander to stand on the same stage one day. It it feels like do you get the warmth of people within the Eurovision family? Listen, of course. I love 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 being a part of it because I feel like it's the best example for a functioning society. <laughs> no because it is we all come together with different point of views and we are not like agreeing on everything but we can disagree in fun and peacefully and harm, uh, in harmony and we we enjoy it and it's in the stage you can be whoever you want to be. I mean there are some rules but not that many and for the rest you can do whatever you want. And it's such a great example. And also, this is the only bubble where everybody thinks I'm Madonna. So <laughs> I will, I will stay. And I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Don't stop doing that. <laughs> so, so Madonna, um, uh, we went to see ABBA last night, didn't yes, we? We, did. we didn't go together, but we were there at the same time. Uh, because as well as your 10 year anniversary, it's 50 years since ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest with Waterloo. Conchita, you went to see Voyage, which is yeah. the Avatars. What did you think of it? It was outstanding. I was, it was jaw-dropping. The moment the show started, I was standing there, like mouth open, not really believing what I see. It's so vibrant and so colorful, and it's glitter and glamour, and, and so well done. The band is incredible. I feel like one of my favorite moments was definitely when when the backing singers and the band got introduced and you could like hear live singing. Yes. Which made my body move I immediately. Besides, the other thing was so artistic. I was really like there enjoying and, and watching it. And then when they when they showed uh, their performance at Eurovision, like the Waterloo performance, that was so brilliant. And then at the end, I'm not going to spoil it if you want to see it, but the end is also very good. Did you feel watching that there's this connection between you and them? You're part of a very exclusive club. I felt like being in the Hunger Games, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's, you know, it's like this gigantic moment and you have them on screen and it's so cineastic and the people are cheering to a screen. And I feel, you know, you get the connection, but it is outerworldly. I have to, I have to be honest, I have never experienced something like this before. When the first time I went to see it, um, we, we had a couple of red wines, you know, when we went yeah, to watch it. Good, I think. Um, <laughs> and and my, um, my friend in the audience went to see it as well. And there was a moment <coughs> where they all of ABBA come on, that the avatars come on stage yes. and do a little monologue. And uh, one of them came on. And what, what did you shout? Agneta, I love you. Agneta, <laughs> Agneta, I love you. We're like, she's not real, babe. <laughs> she's not there. <laughs> But it's just like immersive. And you feel the urge to do it. Yes. Yes, yes, I totally exactly. get it. Exactly. I totally get it. Gustav, ABBA, how much of an ABBA fan are you? Uh, pretty, pretty big one, yeah. What would be your number one ABBA karaoke song? Oh my God. Uh, as someone, I've never done karaoke in my life. What? what? No. <laughs> Never, Is never watched. I don't even get it with the ball and all. No, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't think anyone don't believes <laughs> you. <laughs> with the ball. I mean, with that little ball that moves and ha, ah, it's too much for my brain to take in. It. 
Um, do you believe this? I can't believe no, this. No, really, I'm, I'm swearing karaoke. Let's do karaoke one day. Yeah, yeah karaoke one day. Yes. Yes. We'll need some yes. gin, but yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I think The Visitor is my favorite album. Oh, mine too. So, and I guess the big one on there is One of Us, so I would go for One of Us then. Yep. Yeah. Um, Alexandra? I'm a huge ABBA fan. Uh, it was ABBA and Celine Dion that I listened to when I grew up. And I, my, one of the first songs that I ever did was Mamma Mia, have a hove again, my my, masha masha miss you. Yeah, I was that, I was that tiny. So that's my go-to. I mean, it's a, it's a banger. Have, have, you, have you guys ever done an ABBA cover? Yes, we have. Yeah. Uh, we've actually uh, made a, a canified version of uh, Gimme Gimme. Uh, and With it's the oik. Yeah, oh. and it's like you can add Yoik to any song and it just g gets elevated. <laughs> but it's also, it's usually at the time in our show when we ask the audience, so who's ready for a man after midnight? <laughs> and normally and then yeah. there's a, a fair gimme. few, right? Uh -huh. Yes, we get it. Uh, Fred, ABBA fan? Uh, yeah, my dad had a lot of CDs, but uh, I think my son is a bigger ABBA fan than me because that's my to-go song to put on when he's get like... Uh, a little difficult, uh, <laughs> especially in the evenings. You put Abba on? Yeah, Mamma Mia, he loves that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, so Mama it's like a, like a lullaby <laughs> for your son. Amazing. Yeah. Um, when the yoik don't work, you have to put an Abba song. <laughs> <laughs> your philosophy in life, when the yoik, when the yoik don't work, you put Abba on. I think we can all, all attribute to that. Um, Gustav, I want to come back to you because um, you radiate joy. And we, I think we got on really well last year, didn't we? Yes, yes, at, for sure. Uh, in Liverpool. I think you are the perfect example of why anyone taking part in Eurovision shouldn't look at the odds before they go to Eurovision because they don't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was, in the beginning, it was a bit like, okay, okay, we're, we're not doing very well. But I had to quickly decide either I let that become part of me or it doesn't become part of me. And I decided to not let it become part of me. And I was like, I focus on the work, focus on the acts. And I also knew, I, I, I kind of always felt like I told also the singers I work with who I've known for, for years, it's like, we're not gonna look crazy on stage. We're not gonna look crazy on stage, we'll be fine. And that, that kind of um, self-assurance really helped us. And I knew we were gonna do something well. I just didn't know how well it would pan out, but I did f find it, I, I found it a bit in the beginning overwhelming but then it just became about again the joy and the work of it all and and it's been an amazing journey in that sense i have to say because it, it did feel like we really conquered something in, in that moment yeah can we give a cheer for gustav's joy <laughs> because i don't know about you guys but i i just i saw that journey from because gustav was the first act of last year's crop to come on the podcast it was the day after yes. euro song yes and so i kind of followed gustav's journey and then when we got to liverpool you just saw people reacting smiling warming to this wonderful song and it became an anthem joker out from slovenia loved it they'd sing all the times what is the nickname that joker out give you please Daddy, yeah, Daddy Gustav. Steph Daddy, <laughs> Daddy Gustav. <laughs> How does your husband feel about being called Steph Daddy? Uh, oh, I didn't even, oh my God, <laughs> that's a very good point. Um, well, I have no business talking to boys in their early 20s, so in that sense, <laughs> I'm fine, and I'm happily married, so that's cool. But I have to say, I, I was telling someone else today, the, the boys from Joker Out really also... Um, were so uh, giving in their energy. I think they also made a lot of people become friends because of their interaction with everyone. They kind of took everyone on their path. And for them to embrace the song the way they did was, I, I told them on stage even like, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to start giving you royalties at this point <laughs> because you're doing more promo for the song than me. So, but that, that, there's just something so joyous about those boys and I, I really think the world of them. They're really great, great guys. You joined them on stage last week, didn't yes, you? Yes, in, in Antwerp. Antwerp. Yeah, my How hometown. Was that? Crazy, because, you know, and first they played the song in their Joker Out way, which was lovely, it was like a disco rock song all of a sudden, which was great. And then the crowd just went berserk. But to my own surprise, a bit like, oh, what the, I wasn't ready for it because I th honestly, because they're just, let's be real, they're five beautiful, charismatic boys, and girls are just screaming nonstop. And I was like, yeah, when I come on, when this it's not gonna happen, of course. <laughs> and then I, and I was like, it was even worse, like, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm not used to that, but it was lovely to experience it once. I felt like the Beatles for, for three minutes, which is lovely. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Kano, you guys are just a hit 
factory. Hit after hit after hit, <laughs> song you. after song. Are you ever not working? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you put a song out last week, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Where do you find the time? Uh, we all we, we live in dream music all the time. Like I am, uh, I have these me melodies uh, popping in my head, and just like uh, constantly on the phone while uh, eating breakfast, sitting at the loo, just like uh, humming around. <laughs> yeah, the loo is a hit machine. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. No, I think, and uh, but we we love what we do, and I think that's uh, that's uh, make making it much easier. And we do it, we're doing it by ourselves, so we. Well, we can choose to uh, release uh, a song whenever we, we feel like. Here's to being an independent artist, yes. right? Yay. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> I think with you guys in, in Spirit in the Sky, with your performance, it's very similar to Conchita and also to Gustav. When you watch it back, there's a moment where there's the roar of the crowd. That's when you feel the goosebump moment. Do you know what I mean? It's like the moment you know you've connected with the crowd. Did you hear that? Were you aware of that roar? Yeah, you know, when we came on stage, I couldn't even hear my uh, backing track because the audience were uh, like they were like yoking so loud, so I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't hear myself in my ear. And you can actually see like the moment when all the three of us come together on yeah. stage after your yoik, where we just have this fire in our eyes and we look at each other and we're just like. We did it. Aww. And that's like, uh, yeah, I get emotional just yeah, thinking about great. it. But that was like one of the the most amazing things happening that day. And we were so happy. I'm just like, we were so smiling. It was hurting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also love, I'm sure you've all seen this. You know, when they get the most amount of points from the public. <laughs> and Alexandra, you're just like, <laughs> a, a bit, A bit tipsy at that moment, to be honest. <laughs> we were pouring wine because the wine bottle could never be like, it could never look empty. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, they're just giving us more. <laughs> and I, was, I didn't think that I might go on TV again. And I was just crying. And it was, oh my God, embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Such a moment, though. I loved it, honestly, because it, it, it's the roller coaster of Eurovision. You never know what's going to happen, right? And I think with all three of you, it's you, you make of it what you want. You know, you don't go in with any pressure. You just go and do your thing because you know you're good at it, right? Mm. And it pays rewards. That's why we're all sat here chatting to you right now. Yeah. Conchita has to go and get ready and um, beautify themselves for later. Um, <laughs> not that they're not beautiful already, obviously. Um, uh, just a final thought from you, Conchita. Where's the most amazing place that Eurovision has taken you? Oh my God, that's a very Miss Universe answer. But um, to myself, to be honest, as I said before, I always wanted to be like somewhat of a star and, and, and living my life in a creative way and then this win came and you kind of start to believe it. You believe you start to believe yourself. And then you get you get like literally a seat at the table. And then it, it for me it was just opening door after door after door and make creative creativity just grew even more and I learned so much about myself and about how I want to live life and how, what I want to do with my life. So it truly, yeah, I got to know myself so much quicker probably and more intense than probably without this win. You, yeah. you, made, you made your mark. But one final funny story I've just remembered. I went to Vienna the year after as a fan. I went to the, the contest as a fan. And there's a moment we were stood in the crowd and this box came through <laughs> and we were like, is Conchita in this box? Is I Conchita heard that. here? I heard <laughs> people saying that all the time. Did yeah. you? Because yeah. you you arrived from the audience, didn't yeah. you? Like through the box. Yeah. How long were you in the box? Twenty three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your phone in there? No. No, 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 I was just listening to everybody. So it was like this cannon thingy where they would shoot me out, <laughs> and I was just in there, and it was so exciting because you could feel like the audience coming in, and then the, the music. Started and I was living my, I mean, you didn't see it, but I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. And then it happened. And it, was like, yeah. it was amazing. So you were in the box the yes, whole time. Yes. And you could hear us all going, yes. is Conchita in the box? Yeah, yeah she <laughs> is. Oh my God, oh my God, let's touch the box. I heard that. <laughs> touch uh, the box. <laughs> touch the box. Conchita, thank you so much for joining us oh, here on the podcast. Thank you Thank you. You uh, created a moment. You are the moment. You are the Madonna of Eurovision. Oh, yeah. please. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Hello and welcome.
Welcome back to a very special episode of the official Eurovision Song Contest podcast, recorded in front of a live audience right here at the London Eurovision party. Having a good time? Yeah. We have Gustav still with us. We have Kano still with us. Hey. And we have been joined by one of the class of 2024. It is Sarah Bonici from Malta. Yeah. Sarah, will you sum up your Eurovision journey so far? Crazy. <laughs> no, but um, honestly, really fun. This has always been my dream. So it obviously requires a lot of work and I'm working as hard as I can to obviously deliver the best possible performance. But all in all, I'm just enjoying every moment. Does anybody here know what Sarah does as her day job, by the way? Anyone want to put their hands up? No. Sarah, what's your day job? Well, now I'm a singer, so I quit, I quit oh, yes. my profession, but I was an accountant. <laughs> so if any Eurovision artists need their tax doing, they can get advice De definitely, from Definitely, yeah. I'm no longer practicing yeah. the profession. But yeah. Yeah, but Let, let's, ta let's talk later, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, Sarah, I think everyone here loves the fact that in your song Loop, you do a somersault, a loop on stage. How scary is that? It actually is very scary, but it gets less scary when you practice it more. So now it's just, you know, fun. But you, <laughs> really. you did it in Madrid last week. Yeah. Were you nervous? Mm, not really. No, I got, I got <laughs> used to it. <laughs> um, do you remember, what's your earliest Eurovision memory? I think, well, I've always watched Eurovision since I was a young kid. It was like always an annual family event at home. Uh, but I think the earliest memory is when Helena Paparizzo my number one one. I recall very, very clearly saying, I want to be like her one day. And I think another memory is growing up where my cousins and I used to put up these little shows for our families at home. Uh, we used to literally sing and pretend we were the Eurovision artists and perform to Eurovision songs. And uh, what, like, I look back and watch the videos and I say, who would have told me, you know, that one day I'd be one of them. So I think those are like, the earliest memories that I have. I'm seeing a common theme, Alexandra, because you did that as well. Yeah, definitely. Right? <laughs> a lot. And playing Pichita, playing the drums on like a chair and exactly, stuff. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> playing, the, playing the drums on the chair and playing the guitar with a, like a yeah. racket. And the choreography <laughs> and the choreography as yes, well. Yes, and the hair and the makeup yes, and everything. everything. <laughs> All out. So basically you were always destined to get to Eurovision yeah. one day, right? <laughs> um, well. has, has it been fun meeting everybody? Amazing. Honestly, everyone's so great so far. And I think that's the beauty of Eurovision and music, really, because I feel that it unites people and um, I think it's great. I'm, I'm really enjoying meeting everyone. Did everyone see Sarah dancing with Baby Lasagna, by the way? <laughs> I, I, I felt it wasn't too balanced because um, Baby Lasagna's choreography is just like, pull your, pull your arm down. <laughs> and your choreography has a flip yeah. and everything yeah. else. But well, we tried to balance it out. We didn't do the flip, right? In the so, um, so Gustav, what would be your advice to Sarah as she enters this amazing journey? Enjoy it. Like, uh, don't get distracted by all the noise and distracted by all the... There's going to be a bit of drama, but it's not bad. It has to happen sometimes. But I think enjoying, because I know you love to perform. I've seen it, you, especially when you do all those kind of moves, you're a performer. So get into the performance and keep it about the performance. Because there's so much other stuff that you're going to have to worry about. But in essence, this is what you're here to do, to perform. Um, yeah. Tom, what would be your bit of advice? Well, absolutely the same as Gustav says, but also kind of like, uh, saving a bit for the big moment and I'm not saying now uh, like be a part of it as much as you can but I remember uh, in 2019 uh, the, uh, the less experienced uh, singers they would, would sing and sing in their dressing rooms like yes. uh, constantly warming from the morning up, like, warming up yeah, so the when time. they so yeah. some, of the, some of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> Whoa, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that. that was a really good run, by the way. I love it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so some of them, uh, well, <laughs> when they finally, the, the big night was there, you could hear that it wasn't much left of their voice. Yeah. Right. So and it's kind of like, like, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's like just being there in the, m in the moment and just like being ready when it's there. Yeah. yeah. It was and just a big yeah. soup of sounds because there are no uh, walls. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, there are no walls. Yeah, there are no walls. Sound mayhem in there. Yeah. Sound mayhem. Yeah. That you've, Airpods. You've, 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 yeah. you've summed up Eurovision perfectly. Yeah. Sound mayhem. Yeah. Uh, we are joined by Bambi Thug from Ireland. Hey guys. 
<laughs> hi, Bambi. Oh, hi. Uh, take a seat. I can't sit in this. Oh, you can't oh. sit? Oh, no. no. I shan't. I shan't sit in this. No. Um, Bambi, we had, we had a lovely chat about horror films last week, didn't we? We did. We love the horror movies. We love horror movies. And you as well were at ABBA last night. I was. Uh, how did you find it? I loved it. I danced so hard. I sang so loud. It was beautiful. They had loads of prawns as well. I ate all of them. They had prawns? <laughs> yeah, there was prawns. I went straight to the prawns. I was like, yum. Um, they didn't play Super Trooper, which no. was sad, but they played Fernando, which is my favorite song. So I was like, mm. yeah, it was great. Um, how are you enjoying this Eurovision ride? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pushing through. And I'm Do you relate happy. to that? Tired, but pushing on through. Uh, yeah. yeah, you have to. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's no choice. Yeah, of course. You but it's fun. Later. It's fun. <laughs> it's <is> fun. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It's fun. I'm independent, so I'm doing a lot of jobs, but it's fun. Um, it's a podcast, but we have to talk about what you're wearing. I'm wearing a big condom wrapper, <laughs> <laughs> and I got some condoms for everybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not everybody. I need to save some for other people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got a lot of press to do. There we are. Uh, ba Bambi making an entrance, as always. When you when you were in Madrid, that outfit you wore in Madrid was incredible. Thank you. This is the same designer, actually, Daniel Bosco from Paris. It's like the sequel, isn't it? Yeah, it's it. also scuba gear. Oh, wow. As well, both of them were scuba gear. You can breathe underwater. Gorgeous. I throw me in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that you've, um, you've built up nice friendship with Sylvester from Lithuania. Oh, I have you? done. I've got my little, my little gang already. It's really <laughs> sweet. So what, how, what have you and Sylvester bonded over? We're just weirdos, both of us, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone's really cute, really, really kind. Um, and that's what I look for in friends. Kindness and quirky weird. Um, <laughs> there's, two, there's two witches, essentially, isn't there, this year? There's you and there's Raven as well from yeah, Slovenia. Yeah, true. Witches, witches, witches. Everywhere you look, witches, <laughs> witches. <laughs> Are we going to have a witch collab? We could maybe have a witch collab, Miss. Baby. Baby? Maybe. <laughs> maybe baby. <laughs> When you signed on for Eurovision, is everything... What, what's been the most odd thing about it that you didn't expect? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, hmm, the oddest thing. I don't know. I'm pretty odd. So nothing makes me a bit like, oh. Hmm. Just everything being everything. a bit surreal, even it, for It's you. surreal. It is surreal. Like, the, the, the growth of, of support for me from being, like, tiny... So having my whole country be like, woo! And now other people be like, woo, baby, yeah, that's cool. Sarah, are you finding that as well? The growth of fans and yeah, people getting behind you? Yeah, most definitely. And I think that's, that really does make a difference like to the artist. The support means a lot. It gives you like a lot of, and as she said, like it's a lot of hard work, so we need to like push through. Where is the weirdest place you've performed, Alexandra? The weirdest place? Yeah, as Kano. Oh, wow. What would that be? I We've been on a lot of cruise ships. That's the same as Conchita. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we, I think that... Yeah, the we have. You don't remem remember? <laughs> we have. We've, we, we've performed in a little ice hotel, like a hotel made of ice. Yeah, up uh, north in Norway. Up north in Norway. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, but also like one of those little small bars in Edinburgh. Uh, it's like a... Fi yeah. We got, oh, we've got some other people. It was an amazing, oh. like, 50 people. We were so late. We had just performed at uh, Cologne Pride the day before, and the flight was two hours late. Yeah. So we just, uh, when we landed, people were actually starting to get to the venue. And they're like, okay, where are you? Okay, whoops. Uh, <laughs> So we actually arrived with our full gear, had to do like a little... We did the sound check soundtrack in front of the audience. audience. Like <laughs> but it was an amazing night. And I think that's the thing because we yeah. share the love of music. So, um, Fred, since Eurovision, you are now a dad. How is being a dad going? It goes well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like being a dad. He's a great kid and uh, yeah, getting uh, older and bigger every day. So, yeah. What's his favorite Kano song? Um, I don't actually play Kano songs for him. <gasps> <gasps> what? <laughs> what? He hasn't told us that. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, devastated. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, Black leather. <laughs> <laughs> Black leather. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said on Reddit, you didn't win Melody Grand Prix this year. Were you dumb diggy sad or dumb diggy mad? <laughs> <laughs> Well, no both. No. No. 
<laughs> no, but I mean, we worked hard. We invested a lot of time, a lot of money, and we made like we still have that dream of winning Eurovision, and we felt like. Oh, now this is it. We love the song. It's a good energy. It represents us the way our music has turned out to be now. Um, and then it was like six points. <laughs> and it, it would have actually like felt better if we were like crushed. Like if somebody just won like very clearly. But since it was like that close, it was of course heartbreaking. But I mean, everything happens for a reason. I believe that. Yeah. And we're still touring. I mean, we had a concert in London last night. So I we're still, we're well. still yeah. there. Did yeah. anyone go last yeah. night to Kano? No. Yeah, oh, a few people are here from the audience. <laughs> so the question for Gustav, how many hats do you have in your collection and what is your favorite? I have way too many hats um, and I can't stock them anymore. So we were using the kitchen cupboards <laughs> to put in hats at this point. So we're renovating the house to make sure we have more room for hats. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I'm, I just, it's just become a, a obsession in, for years. So it's about f over 50, 60. But I mean, it's also caps and other stuff I can put on my head. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. And Where, Where's the Eurovision one? That's saved in a box. And I'm, my plan is once we're done with this renovation to give it a special place in, in my apartment. Oh, yeah. give it a nice little, uh, you yeah. know, a box for the hat, yeah, on I mean, display, a Yeah, plinth. because I couldn't keep the clothes I was wearing were from Walter van Beren, the designer I was working with, but it's an old stock piece. So I had to go back to his stock uh, from years ago. So I could only keep the hat actually. So I want the hat to have a special place. In oh, the it's yeah. an amazing hat. We love the hat. Yeah. We'll do hat night and karaoke then. Yes. 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 <laughs> I'm bringing the gin. Okay, yes. and the hats. And the hats, yeah. okay. <laughs> For Sarah, if you could sing any other Eurovision entry, what would it be? From this year, I think it would be... Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was that, was that Bambi saying, do yeah, me, do me, my song? I said, do me, <laughs> <laughs> The witch, the witch. Um, I think it would be Italy's entry from this Ah, La Noia. Yeah, I think so. Have you met Angelina Mango yet? Yeah, I met Angelina, and I think she's really sweet, and she's very, very talented. Am I right in thinking that you, when you went for the Maltese national final, did you, was it a surprise to you when you won? Yeah, <laughs> clearly, I think. I mean, if you rewatch the videos, you realize that it was a huge surprise for me. I mean, obviously, I worked as hard as I could, and I really believed in my song and in my performance. But uh, I was never, reality is that I was never, like, in the odds, I was never the favorite to win. But when the music video came out and when the performance came out um, and I saw the reaction of people, it was was crazy and I ended up winning but yeah it was it was actually it was actually a big surprise for me and now you're opening semi-final two I am <laughs> it's a big moment and I quite like that both Bambi and Sarah here are in different semi-finals so you know there's no there's no rivalry it's nice <laughs> <laughs> has Ireland now fully embraced you Bambi yeah except for some priests <laughs> it's true, it's true. But yeah, no, it has. It's doing good. It's doing well. It's doing good for me. Well, I saw you in Madrid and the crowd reaction was great. Yeah. Like people loved it. Yeah, I think seeing me live changes your mind on things. Some people were like, this was my least favorite song and now it's my favorite song. I'm like, you just need to understand. Also, we have to say the, the Screamo is a talent because Voyager did it last year for Australia. Bambi does it as well. You can't just do that. That takes practice mm. and technique. Yeah. <laughs> and a bit of psycho. Um, no, it does. I have a scream coach as well as a singing teacher. So it's just to find like the different placement. It's kind of actually about being very relaxed in your in your in your show, like you're yawning almost. But then, <laughs> but then it's not like yawn. not yawning. <laughs> it's the actual reverse of a yawn. <laughs> yeah. It's an actual scream. Yeah. Um, have you guys seen Bambi's song yet? Yes. yes. It's there's nothing Are you quite scared like of it. it? <laughs> no. no, absolutely I love, love it. it. Love yeah. it. Thank yes. you. Amazing. Thank you. So, Takeno, if you had to produce an interval act for your own country of Norway, what would it be, or who would it be? I th wow, that's a good question. I think that's a good thing with uh, Eurovision being in Sweden this year. They are 
so pros when it comes to uh, producing a show. But I think w- what we would do would be to kind of grab the essence of what Kano is, because Kano is always going to be a place where you can be whoever you are, uh, and regla- regardless of uh, how you look, where you're from, your religion, your background, uh, who you love. And I think it would be the same with the music as well, bringing in a lot of uh, the elements that we have in our music, like both uh, the Sami, the Norwegian, the indigenous, maybe a little, little let's a big cocktail of music and, uh, and impressions in this. We have another one of the class of 2024 on stage. Please welcome Musti from Belgium. Here he is. And he's going to save the biggest hug for Belgium and Belgium. Uh, hi, mate. Hi, how are you? Fine, and you, oh my God. Oh, I did. There's a lot it's, of it's, it's, here. it's a big audience. Oh my <laughs> but my angel is there with me, so I'm, al- I'm always... I'm always feeling comfortable when Gustav is around. <laughs> oh, d- I, yes. I don't know if any of you heard Musti on the podcast, but these two bonded, and <laughs> Gustav has been giving Musti advice on a daily basis. Um, always checking if I'm not depressed or <laughs> something like that. Are you okay? Are you okay? Do you want to talk? you want to talk? <laughs> I can talk with you right now. Eh? <laughs> How are you finding everything? Oh, it's, it's great. It's a bit overwhelming, but you told me uh, before. Like, yeah, it's a bit overwhelming, but, but it's really great vibes. It's super positive and... I feel I feel good. I feel the the vibe between the artists also is great. You know, we sh- I didn't want to be there in a contest mood, and I don't feel that at all. It's just that we learn to we learn to 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 feel each other, to yeah, to to know each other, and it's so so cool. I f- I can feel the positive vibe, but it's just like yeah, it's a new adventure for me. So it's a bit overwhelming, but it's it's cool. I'm okay. Well, you're all in it together. <laughs> you know, Bambi, so <laughs> yeah. hold okay. on to the table, Musti. <laughs> um, this man has given you so much good advice um, and he did such a good job it's last year, didn't he? The story of Gustav is amazing. And, you know, you're, it's, I, I, we just have to look at your performance, look at your story at Eurovision and learn a lot and just be so respectful. Belgium is so proud of you, really. And uh, so it's a bit of pressure for me <laughs> to no. go after you're you. You're doing great, you're doing great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it's, um, I'm so happy that we, because for me, we know friends and I'm so happy. Yes, same yeah, for me. We did a party in Brussels. Yes. The other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, Together, no, party, yeah, a drag yeah. show. Party is never, never over with the music. <laughs> no, yeah. Belgium's get your like song, the party. Get yeah. your song title in there, of course. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a pro. He's a pro. Yeah, it's all because of you, you know. Oh. Yeah. See, that's, you know. <laughs> Musti, I'm glad you're here because there was a bit of an emergency yesterday, wasn't there? Because they cancelled the yes. flight. In fact, to be honest with you, I slept only one hour because there, yeah, it was the pre-party at Barcelona. And then, so I was in my room. I, I'm talking about my life. It's annoying. I'm sorry. I was, <laughs> I, I was in my room at first in the morning and with the adrenaline, the energy, impossible to sleep. And we have a council flight this morning. So we had to get up earlier. So five o'clock in the lobby so i'm like one hour sleep and i'm like am i a zombie or a vampire <laughs> i don't really know am i, am I bambi thug? is it just am i bambi thug? <laughs> <laughs> oh we love bambi by the way <laughs> yeah, of course. and so yeah it's a bit it's a surreal for me but it's okay I like that it's i'm just flying like you know without alcohol and nothing i didn't do anything but it's just a bit like i'm, I'm in the air yeah uh, it's a good, you know. But you look great. Uh, you yeah, think you so? look I amazing. Really do. Yeah, buttox, uh, acid hyaluronic, a lot of uh, surgery. Ah, but it's a pr- yeah. it's comes out. Hey. And I love the pearls. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, um, you see the contrast between. It's a bit of the party before the party is over dress because you have the, the um, you know, it's completely destroyed. It's uh, the end of the party and the glam. So the contrast is there in one outfit. It's the, mus- the musty aesthetic, basically. Yes. <laughs> musty, as people know, you are a, dr- a judge on Drag Race, and you two were on the same episode of Drag Race Belgium. You yes. were the special guest, yes. weren't you, Gustav? I How think was that's that? the first time we met, actually. Yeah, and you were just announced as the Eurovision exactly. candidate for Belgium. Yeah, yeah it was... And it, it was, was, was immediately a click, and we started, and we gave each other's phone numbers, and yeah, it was so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Already asking, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" <laughs> <laughs> but it did so really well as, as a you were, It was so well. My, my French is it's okay, no, but no, no, it could be better. Yeah, because yeah, in Belgium we have like three languages: uh, Flemish, French, and, and uh, German. German, German, of course. 
But uh, you know, you speak very well. I'm more in Flemish. For me, it's uh, more difficult. I can say, "Hoe uh, gaat het met jou?" That does heel goed, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what does that mean? It means, "How are how you are doing?" You? <laughs> <laughs> so simple. I thought it was like a secret code. Uh, we have another of the uh, class of 2024 who's just uh, walked in. Please welcome Kayleen from Austria. <laughs> Hiya! Um, Hi everyone. I, I felt quite special the other week because I went to go and see Kayleen at uh, a dance studio and it was your first day of doing the choreo for We Will Rave, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. When we talked, there was nothing uh, rehearsed yet. So <laughs> you got the, the first uh, minute experience, yeah. All I remember is your song was on loop for yeah. about <laughs> half an hour, wasn't it? And that yeah. was the rest of the day, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> ever since then, basically. <laughs> it's just, you go to bed, it's in your head. You go, you wake up, it's in your head. Yeah, but I, I don't even feel like it's, it's, it's stuck in my head. It, it's just there all the time. It's just the soundtrack that's, yeah, that's life at the moment, yeah. So how's it been since we last saw you? Uh, great, great, a lot going on. Like, I feel like uh, weeks now feel like years more or less <laughs> because so many things happen at the same time yeah so every day is different every day is exciting and today is exciting as well <laughs> do you feel that musty weeks oh. are like years yeah yeah of course no it's it's but like i said overwhelming and it's like it's crazy it's it's really but i think it will be more intense i, I think so more intense day by day so i'm so. um, yeah, trying to stay like focused on on the moment you know not to see the big picture because it's it's a lot but step by step you know and it's just try to have some great time and live the moment, I think. Yeah. Is it funny, Alexandra, hearing all these people and going, yeah, I know what that was <laughs> like. Yeah, completely. I, I, I know the feeling when you talk about it and it's, yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy, but it's amazing. And just remember to enjoy everything that you're experiencing right now. Um, Hamne Krog once told me that you should write a di uh, diary. Uh, diary. <laughs> so you should like remember everything that you're feeling because it's like, so many things happening all the time. You're amazing, both yeah, of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is what, uh, last week I was speaking to Nemo, and Nemo's really good friends with Taya, of Taya mm -hmm. and Selena from yeah. Austria last year, and she said exactly the same. Write a diary, old school, pen and paper, write yeah. down like how you're feeling. Yeah, or notes on your phone is, if that's oh, yes. easier. <laughs> we but are yeah. in 2024, <laughs> after <Yeah>. all. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but does, it, does it feel like that, that everything is just like a, a bullet train going past your eyes? Yeah, because there's a lot of information, a lot of new friends suddenly, a lot of, you know, mm. <laughs> so it's a bit of an explosion in the head. But um, I want to try to, to, to be in the moment. That's maybe the hardest, you know, you're always thinking about tomorrow, about mm. how we, ha we have to do that, we have to be better on that. But at one point, I really want to enjoy and I'm really trying to, to enjoy. I, I feel that in two months, I'll be like, okay, it's already finished. Mm. I, I, and it's cool because I see you seem not depressed and alive. So <laughs> <laughs> it means that we can go through Eurovision yeah, yeah, and yeah. be fresh yes. as a flower. Of yeah. course. And like <laughs> all the new people we met during Eurovision are it's people safe. coming to our concerts now. Nice. Like That's great. this is the reason because we were a fresh band. It was our first time, our first song ever in Eurovision. Um, and uh, yeah, if it wasn't for our fans, then we wouldn't. But yeah, we kind of take took care of that in a way. Yeah. There's a lot of waiting in Eurovision. You should know this. Like if you think it's a lot of waiting in this <laughs> pre-party, it's like during Eurovision, there's 90% is waiting. Yeah. Yeah. And we were always like waiting next to uh, Duncan uh, in oh, 2019. Yeah. Duncan Lawrence. So we became very good waiting buddies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all of us. And uh, we've stayed in touch. And, uh, it was like being in guy. high school, yeah. in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Kayleen, who have you got before and after you in the semi-final? I know I got... Friends before me, but after me, I'm not sure now. Let's try and think, because yeah, that's yeah, who yeah. you're going to be friends with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who do you have, Mustard? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. I didn't uh, yeah, study I the, 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 the schedule. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know if anyone I here can know. remember. But we'll, 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 anyway, whoever is before and after you, they are going to become your we'll, friends. We'll just yeah. take everyone. Everyone is going to be. Like the class of 2024, I just love that. And that's what also makes sense now with what you said. Yeah, yeah we're just all classmates now. <laughs> What's been your biggest pinch me moment? Probably last week at the first flag parade. <laughs> oh yeah. Of yeah. the yeah, it was it was a very emotional moment for me when we were all standing on stage with our flags and then I, I looked into the audience and in in everybody's eyes and you could just feel something so special that well actually it's just like I don't know how many artists we were last week. Twenty something people standing on stage with a flag. Like it's not that special, but at Eurovision it is the most special thing ever. 
And then I, I really got emotional in that moment. Yeah. Now, this is the thing, right? And I don't know if any of you in the audience agree with me, but in the flag parade, when they come out, I want over the top flag waving. I don't, <laughs> I don't want coming out and looking down and going off. I want like status. I want people to like show me their flag, show me they're there. So my big advice, Musti, Kayleen, come out, practice. We'll do that. I want pose. I want poise. <laughs> Work the flag. Want, you know what? Yes. I felt a bit stupid at this moment. It was also a, a special moment, but. I didn't, it was so quick in the preparation, so I didn't understand, I'm sorry, I'm a bit blonde, but <laughs> that, that, that we had to go in the middle, I just, I was already in my line, you know, and so I didn't, I didn't understand at that time that we had to go in the middle and like be completely full flag. I was a bit shy, I was like, but why am I so shy at this moment? <laughs> you need to be proud of yeah. your country. <laughs> but, but I didn't understand, I didn't, it was super quick moment, but no, we, so, no, well, I, no I know, no, for next time. For next time, Musti, yeah. I want more effort, yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> come on, we want to see it. Um, we have come to the end of our time uh, with this very special episode of the podcast, but I don't know about you, but I've just loved seeing these Eurovision faces, legends and you all on stage together. I want to say a big thank you to Gustav, to Kano, to Kayleen, to Musti, to Sarah, to Bambi Thug and to Conchita. We love them being part of Eurovision. We can't wait for Malmo and thank you to you, the audience as well, for supporting the podcast, being here today. Go and enjoy the party and just have an amazing Eurovision season. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.